Hello and welcome to Peak Parental Performance. United Football Academy in Cumming, Georgia presents our parent education program designed to help parents support their players through their soccer journey. In this presentation, we will focus on why kids play sports. And we originally presented this September 14th of 2016 at the Fowler Park Community Room. It was presented to a group of United Football Academy soccer parents. We talked about why kids play and understanding your players' motivations. Can we relate to children from our adult perspective? Can we see the game through the eyes of a young player? So we want to understand the reasons why kids play. One of the most obvious is because it's fun. It's a game and the kids want to play and get out there and be creative and enjoy it. Mom and dad wanted me to play a sport and they picked soccer for me. It could be cultural in that mom and dad played or maybe older brother or sister have an uncle that played or an aunt that played. We watched the game and it looked interesting so we thought we would try to play. They stay in it because they want to get better and it's a challenge to acquire the skills. Dribbling and scoring are main reasons why. They love to dribble the ball and they love to score goals. Girls love to compete. Primarily it's a social event for them. They want to play with their friends but they love to compete. And the boys, a little bit of social, more on the competitive side. They love to just beat up on each other. And the parents' reasons. We want to promote a healthy lifestyle. Could be some social benefits. Maybe it was the parents' sport. Many other reasons. What are the benefits? Being active develops good habits that we hope our children carry on with in their adult life. So we want to create that healthy lifestyle when we start early when they're children and hopefully ingrain that into their behavior. They're going to make friends. It could be lifelong friends. The families get close. They end up spending vacations together. It's just a really great way to socialize. It does bring some structure to the life because there are repercussions if you don't do well in school. So you have to do well in school if you want to continue to play. There are responsibilities within the team, social responsibilities. The players have to learn how to interact, what you can and can't do, and also the positive feedback that they get from playing sport, from playing soccer, can spill over into other aspects of their life, primarily their school performance, and just their overall self-confidence. They have the ability to work with other players, um, having their back while their teammates have their back, cooperating and understanding their role within the team, their role within a specific position. We're going to use some information from Fun Maps and the Fun Integration Theory, a really great study done out of George Washington University. So the Fun Integration Theory, or FIT, identifies the three primary stakeholders of U Sports the players, the parents, and the coaches. So between the three parties, the, the three primary stakeholders, we all need to work together to make sure that we keep soccer fun and enjoyable. It needs to be engaging. It needs to be challenging. And we want to make sure that players stay in the game. In addition to these points, we want to understand that compared with school-sponsored physical education, youth sport programs provide a broader community support for addressing the physical inactivity and childhood obesity epidemics by engaging children and adolescents in addition to parents, coaches, and families. What we want to understand is, unfortunately, by the time a lot of players get to adolescence, we're losing a lot of them. And these are, these are concerning trends that we want to be aware of. So what is fun maps? Using fun using a novel mixed methods assessment of participants in sport. Identifying the main determinants of fun, because while they may seem obvious, it's important that we specifically identify what they are, group them together to provide some information about how they interrelate, quantifying each fun determinants relative importance, the frequency, and the feasibility, and then understanding the 11 dimensions of fun. So 
So Fun Maps has taken a lot of information from parents, from players, and from coaches, mixed it all up, and come up with the 11 dimensions of fun through 81 fun determinants. So we'll talk about the 11 dimensions of fun. First one, trying their hardest. Then being a good sport, positive coaching, learning and improving, game time support, the games, practice, the team friendships, mental bonuses, team rituals, and swag, or their cool uniforms and the neat stuff that they get when they play soccer. So the results point out that the three highest related dimensions, most important things that we want to be aware of, are being a good sport, trying hard, and making sure we have positive coaching. So playing well as a team, being supported by their teammates, having good sportsmanship, trying your best, exercising, playing well, being strong and confident, setting and achieving goals, and knowing that the coach will treat the player with respect, will be encouraging, clear, consistent direction so that the players understand exactly what it is we're asking them to do, and that the coach is friendly and that we give compliments. We don't always point out negatives, but we point out positives and keep it, keep it high energy. Some main points to discuss. Fun integration theory is partnering to keep it fun. So coaches and parents and players, we all want to be pulling in the same direction, working together, understanding why kids play so we can keep them in the game longer. Knowing that two to three hours a week of activity has significant health benefits. As players are growing, we want them to be engaged and we want them to be playing sport. We want you to play soccer, but we want you to play sport because of the benefits as your child's system is developing, the cardiovascular, metabolic, musculoskeletal, all those have big impacts if you're active versus inactive. Fun. Simple simply means someone or something that is amusing or enjoyable. And we want to keep it fun because that's why kids play. They play because it's fun and they also stop playing because it's no longer fun because coaches put too much pressure on them, parents put too much pressure on them, it's all about winning, it becomes too much of an extrinsic focus versus an intrinsic where they're just self-motivated and they want to play because they love it. Physical inactivity and childhood obesity is something that we all want to really be aware of. So when we get players that are engaged in playing, we have a better chance of them staying involved for longer and not dropping out because we have more than 50% of kids dropping out of soccer and in sport in general by adolescence. And that means we're turning a lot of teenagers loose and they no longer have the structure of a sport. So in conclusion, sport participation is the primary means of activity for many children. Keeping sport fun so that they stay in it and play longer is our primary objective. So knowing why kids play will help parents and coaches ensure that we keep kids active. Thank you for taking the time to listen to this presentation. I'm hopeful that it gives you some tools to understand what your players are going through and how better to support them. This has been Peak Parental Performance. It's a program brought to you by United Football Academy in Cumming, Georgia. You can visit our website, unitedfa.org. My name is Don Schultz. You can drop me a line with comments, suggestions. Appreciate any feedback. to don at unitedfa.org. For more information, you can search Fun Integration Theory. Uh, it's a fabulous report. Couldn't cover all the information in this presentation. So if you want to understand a little bit more about how the information was put together, um, how it was mixed up, and, and how it was presented um, to, to these findings, please take a look at that more in depth. It was a, a cooperative effect effort from George Washington University, Boston University. 
and Georgia Southern University to the following individuals. Amanda Visick, Sarah Akrati, Heather Mannix, Karen McDonnell, Brandon Harris, Loretta DiPietro. And we thank them for their hard work and effort and energy in putting this information out there and making it available for coaches and for parents to wrap their head around what is most important for our players. Thanks again. This is Peak Parental Performance. This is the third of six presentations. Please visit unitedfa.org to view all of those. Thanks again.